So for more reaction on a stunning hurling weekend, I'm delighted to say that on the back of Limerick 332, Cork 231 after extra time, the Cork manager, John Myler, has made some time for us this evening. John, many thanks for joining us. Uh, I guess commiserations, first of all. I mean, it must be incredibly disappointing. Ah, yeah, it's, um, it's hard um, to take, really. We're gutted, um, you know, to be part of such a an outstanding hurling match, but uh, to come out on the wrong side of it is tough, it's hard. You know, it's, We've been there before a few times, but, um, you know, yesterday there, critical times in the game. We didn't close it out six points up, eight minutes to go, mm. didn't close it out. And, you know, in fairness, Limerick substitutions really um, drove Limerick on and gave him an impetus then, you know. The Limerick bench contributed 2-6. Yeah. The Cork bench managed just a single point. I mean, the likes yeah. of Shane Dowling, obviously, and Casey off the bench. They had a really good bench. A few people, we were in here beforehand. Ryan O'Dwyer was in studio and we had Tommy Welch at the game. And even before throw-in, they both looked at that Limerick bench and said it was probably an edge for Limerick going into it. Yeah. Well, the game today has gone into a 20-man uh, game and that's really it. Like, the day of, of, of lasting 70 minutes is, is, is gone and we had to take off Danny Carney and Luke Mead, um, you know, in, into the second half because they had run themselves into the ground. And, you know, Limerick then, I saw Limerick warming up Casey and uh, and Dowling, like, and they made that massive contribution to them. And, you know, Robbie O'Flynn came on and, you know, he made a great run, nearly set Seamus up. And, you know, to, to, to small errors, small margins, and that's really it. And, you know, Limerick have been building on that for a good few years in terms of winning a minor, winning colleges, winning clubs. All of that helps to kind of give players more experience, which they had on the bench, which we don't have. And, you know, that comes down to winning minor under-21s in colleges as well, you know. And was that something that you were conscious of for much of the year, that maybe there was a slight oh. weakness in depth? Yeah, but I, I was at the Kilkenny match and the, the impetus that Casey and Dowling had that day against Kilkenny, you know, gave them a fresh you know, give them a fresh surge of energy and, you know, Dowling taking the free yesterday, taking frees. You know, he's an experienced player. He's been there before and, you know, um, Casey and they've, they've played with the club and winning club all Ireland. So mm. it's experience that they have, which we don't have, you know, of, of winning tight matches in, in situations like that. And, you know, when you need experience to come off the bench to contribute, they contributed 2-6 and our score came from Jack O'Connor and, you know... Like that, that, yeah. that's a cruel difference, you know. Yeah, no, it is cruel, especially at that level. And and yeah. John, was that something when you arrived into the job and you looked at the squad that you were slightly worried about as Cork manager? Well, like that, that one of the criticisms levelled at us last year was that anybody could have named the first fifteen. You know what I mean? And we used the Munster Senior League, we used the National Hurling League to try and find, you know, two, three new players. And and um, you know, I think you know we found Sean O'Donoghue. Tim O'Mahony unfortunately got injured in the club game so really wasn't available to us after the National Hurling League and probably would have been in contention. Robbie O'Flynn has stepped up so Dan Brown is there as well so you know Billy Hennessy out of ours so there's a few young fellas coming but but like and I said this to the Limerick people afterwards that they had players you know they, they, their senior under 21 Keen Lynch Kyle Hayes like as much as we have Fitzgibbon and Harnady or Fitzgibbon and uh, Coleman they're contributing as well so you know, they have that block of experience which we don't have. Then, yeah. You know, we need to find a few more players. And, you know, Alan Cadigan was a big loss yesterday, which would have given us an impetus there in five, ten minutes, or even if he'd have started. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, like there, 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 there's another two or three hurlers in Cork. Yes, there are. There's, we, do, we just need to get them and to bring them in. It was clear, obviously, there were a few worries because Seamus Harnady was clearly kind of patched up and, and came out for extra time, not himself. And then Daniel Carney, who'd come off is put back on again and Shane Kingston as well. So yeah, were, yeah. were those lads in no real fit state to go back on, but you just had to look, roll the look, dice? Harnady is a leader and Harnady wanted to play and, you know, he said that, at, you know, going into extra time, I'm, I'm, I'm good to go, I'm good to go. And, and, you know, you have to respect the player's opinion like that. And unfortunately, we had to take him off and, and, and that was it. And, uh, you know, the players want to play at Kearney as well. But, but look, look, that's it. You know, we should have closed the game out in normal time. And, mm. You know what I mean? That, that That's really what we should have done, you know? Yeah. So 62 minutes up, as you say. Sorry, sorry, sorry 62 minutes on the clock and you're six yeah. points up. And, yeah. you know, this Cork side have let Leeds slip against Tipperary and Limerick in the Munster Championship and, and this Leeds slip again as well. Yeah. yeah. 
Is it possible to shut down a game of hurling the way, you know, we talk no. about shutting down a game of football? Is there anything no. more that you could be doing to actually just go ultra-defensive and shut it down? If you go ultra-defensive, you're only drawing the opposition, aren't you? You, yeah. you look at the start of the match on Saturday, Galway and Clare, and it was 1-7 to a point, and you say, like, Jesus, where are Clare going here? Um, they're dead and buried. And, and, and then I think, you know, at half-time, Galway were only a point up, and you say, where did that go wrong? I, I think the game today is more about keeping the scoreboard ticking over. Mm. Just take the simple points as distinct from complicating it. And, you know, that when we were six up, we, you know, I, I think Cads was fouled for over carrying. Bill fouled, you know, little, little, little small little things. Lahan had the chance in front of the goal to roar the barney just put it a couple of inches wide. So, you know, there are they're little things there. And that, that's um, composure on the ball at those critical stages. Yeah, I guess, I mean... How do you sort that out, really? That's a, a tricky one to try and fix. Like, Limerick, Limerick have the youngest squad out there, really. Like, in the average yeah, age but, is 23. But, but, but I know they're experienced. Yeah, as, as I said to you, they have won colleges. They've won minors. Yeah. They've won, you know, under-21 All-Ireland. They've won club All-Ireland. So they're, they're, they're used to winning and they know how to win. It's, it's just you have to cross that line. Mm. Kenny has it in buckets. They have that tradition of, you know, staying in the game for 70 minutes and they'll stay there and they'll stay there. And, and that's built on tradition and, and winning. You, I mean, Cork really go for games as well as the other thing. Like, it's noticeable that, um, certainly in defence, it was definitely, for most of it, man on man, and you're just giving your defenders the responsibility to mark your men. Like, we saw Aaron Galan a few times, twice, uh, you yeah. know, almost kicking, the, we kicked the ball over, kicked it wide as well. I think he was yeah. on Colin Spillane. Yeah. That, is the, that is the Cork approach. You, you like that approach of, I like, look, I, I trust you guys to win your battles. But, but, but like, you know, any good defender should have pride in defending and any good defender should be able to mark his man and he has to be able to defend one-on-one -on -one in, in those situations. Like, yeah, we can put a sweeper back there and, and um, you know, everything is rosy then in the garden mm. sometimes where you have two against one but, you know what I mean, I would rather be attacking up the field and, and, and taking the game to the opposition and saying to Cullum and, and Damien and Sean O'Donoghue, you, you have got to mark your man and, mm. and, and defend and defend whatever way possible and defend from the front, defend whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that the game is so fluid now that you don't know where you're, you, you're, you know, people say so and so playing corner forward. There's no positions anymore, really. Everybody is everywhere and mm. you have to be able to send outside and inside. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, the game's at a very interesting stage, all right. Because I would wonder about that. So you're a manager, say, on the sideline yesterday and you watch Galan get those two chances. And, like, you know, because everyone's man for man and you said, and as you say, positions are all over the place. Yeah. It, when you go man for man as a defence, it would strike me it would make it easier for the opposition to isolate certain one-on-ones close to goal because obviously people are tearing up the field after their men. And that's why, I, I mean, I call it a sweeper, call it whatever the hell you want, but I don't know, is there some kind of argument for, you know, zonal, well, we're going to keep these two spots of the pitch looked after with men. I, like, that stuff must cross your mind when you watch Galan, you know, getting in like that. But I know you're Robin Peter to pay Paul. These I are the was, things I you're thinking annoyed. about. I was annoyed with Galan at the time, you know, and, and um, you're saying to him to get tighter. And, you know, he was a bit jumpy early on in the game. And, and as you say, Galan caught those balls. So, like, look, these guys are top class inter county holders. You have to be able to defend them, yeah. you know. But you expect then the, the, the wing backs then to be like Coleman and um, and Cads to, to be tracking back to help out. But you know what I mean? That that the game is so fluid between number five and number twelve that into you know players are interchanging and that and the speed of the game is 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 is, is lightning fast. So you know that's the way I prefer to play. Mm, yeah. Um does it make it easier to take a defeat like yesterday when it's a classic like that, like you clearly like attacking hurling, or does it make no odds to you? No, no, no odds to me. I hate losing. I, 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 you know, I'm up this morning early. You're, you're scratching your head. What did you do wrong? Why? What could you have done better? Um, I don't. I've no interest in classics. I've been interested in winning. And you know, if we had won nine eight, I'd be happy with that. And you guys saying that there was the worst game of hurling of all time. You know, as a manager manager is under pressure in today's environment to, to win matches and that's what we have to do we have to win matches and that is our focus um, so you know John Kiley's going into an All-Ireland final I'm going looking at the sun, sun mm. somewhere or going to a match or something like that that's what he has a focus now for another month I don't um, you know and, then, and to be part of probably the best hurling championship of all time uh, this year um, I, I take 
comfort out of that, but um, not out of losing yesterday. And you know, where you know, as you made your, the point yourself, we need another two or three more players, you know, to have more strength and depth, and that's what we really need to find in the next few weeks now in club championship here in Cork. Do you, as a team, travel back to Cork together last night, or do you go your separate yeah, ways? Everybody, everybody, yeah, everybody was on the bus, and uh, except one, Rob O'Shea was working in Dublin this morning, and and. You know, like I, I, I sorry for the players. Like we didn't get to the uh, Port Leash um, uh, toll. It, we were three hours on the bus, so you know the traffic was so heavy. And mm. you know we got back to Cork at twelve o'clock, and you know these guys have got to go to work this morning. Like and um, it, 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 it takes an unbelievable, you know, physical toll on their body, a social toll on their families, and you know their 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 mental strength has tested everything and. You know, they, they deserve the greatest credit um, for the performance yesterday and Saturday. And, you know, to go into work then this morning and, you know, some people are elated. The Limerick fellas are walking on air and, and the Cork fellas are depressed. So, you know, and then, you know, I went in this morning and um, one of the girls in the office said, do you want a hug or something like that? Mm. And, you know, so there's a lot of um, pressure on these players to perform at the highest level and, and the the effort that they give, the the credit that they deserve is is enormous. And you know, this has been an incredible. That's our um, that's our sixth game of hurling this year. You know what I mean? The most teams probably, I'd say, Cody has won All Ireland with four matches. I mean, yeah. six, you know, and um, and you know that that's tough. Then it's hard. Like, and you, you're back in, facing into club championship now in the next week or two weeks here, and fellas are giving out to them about this, that, and the other thing. So. You know, the players today deserve enormous credit, mm. you know? Yeah. What did you say to them last night on the bus or in the dressing room, or is there no point in doing that in the immediate aftermath? I, I'm always a straight talker. Sometimes I end up in trouble by doing too much straight talking, but um, you know, I, I just told them what what is obvious from the match yesterday and what we need to rectify going forward. I think that I think we've moved forward as a team. I've complimented them on that. and I've complimented them on their effort, their attitude, all of that. Um, I think we have gone forward from last year. The under-21s are in the semi final Saturday, so I spoke to them about the importance of winning that match and about the importance of that going forward. And, you know, there's good underage talent coming through. So, you know, and Seamus spoke as well and, and um, the county board spoke with Frank Murphy. So, you know, there was, he was very positive. But at the same time, conscious of not winning, you know. But yeah. I, I, uh, you know, they're a great bunch of fellas. But you know, I mean, they know I think that of them, and they would always respect me for just giving it straight. Yes. Yeah. 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 And what about yourself? What uh, did you make mistakes? Do you have anything that you're bugged at that you did I, yesterday? Yeah, like, you, you know, you you, you do um, like the fact that Hannity. You know, it was carrying an injury through the second half. Then you have to take uh, Danny Carney and Luke Meadoff, who are our two workhorses, and that would have highlighted something to me. You know that we need to find another two workhorses in ten and twelve that do that work, and and that you can replace a bit like the props in rugby. Yeah. Um, you know, substitutions. Did they work? Did they, they didn't work? Obviously, like, but that's the way it goes. Like they work. It worked in the Munster final against Clare, but it didn't work yesterday. So, you know, the twenty-man game is becoming more and more important. Because you know? the substitutions one is interesting, right? Because I saw, um, and look, everyone's a critic, and you know that Dermot O'Sullivan was talking, and he was saying that the substitutions in those nine minutes, Ellis and Robbie yeah. O'Flynn and O'Mahony, he said it upset yeah. the balance, and yeah. uh, they were done too quickly, killed the momentum. But like the. <laughs> The other side of that coin is if you do nothing, then you could lose out in, in the oh, energy but, but, stakes. But Carney, Carney, Carney signalled after about yeah, he six had to minutes go. he was gone. Yeah. Carney signalled after six minutes. He did that in the most of the final. We took him off. Mm. And and the same with Luke. Like, and that's what we expect them to do. We expect them both to go to empty the tank. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's why they were, they couldn't go anymore. They, they, you know, they, they, their calves were locked and their, their muscles were locked out. And, you know, because they had done so... Like, Carney was incredible yesterday. The, the, the performance that he gave, the amount mm. of possessions he had, the scores, he got all of that. The same with Luke. Like, fantastic work right up and down, get the scores, bang up and down the field all day long. Tad then was possibly in a bit of trouble in the half-back. Like, so, you know, 
Ellis, we brought, Ellis has been struggling with, with groin hamstring injury, so we brought him in to freshen it up. And, mm. you know, the, the, and in a game like that, it's very difficult to get into it. And, um, you know, and the Limerick substitutions worked. There for, you know, our substitutions worked in the must have final. So, yeah. look, that. I know. I'm, I'm sure there's times where you make a substitution and for whatever reason it works out and everyone's calling you a genius, but like genius. you don't know if it's yeah. going to work or not. No, you know, and Kylie got him right just with Dowling and Casey and that. Yeah. I mean, but like, look, um, I, I, I think we're definitely gone forward. I think we're moving forward. I think we know what we're at. We, we just need more more players, now, you know, I mean, that can step up to top class championship level and you know I think that was an incredible game yesterday you know? yeah uh, look it was just amazing I'm amazing I presume you're you're itching to go again and you're going nowhere and you want to be with this Cork side again next year yeah but you're 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 buzzing this morning and you're buzzing this afternoon and you'll be buzzing a while and you'll get a few sly remarks and you'll get a few comments posted at you but you're you know it's, it's, we all want to be involved and if you can't not want to be involved in occasions like yesterday, but but you want to win them too, though. But you know, I love the buzz. I love. I, I think this has been an incredible journey this year with the Munster Championship. The format has been incredible. Like uh, you know, to play a match. I think players. I think the GA have to realise how successful the Munster Championship was this year in the other and It's condensed. It's tight. Yeah, it's hard on players. It's, you know, but, but but probably two matches and then a week break. Two matches a week break. Two matches. You know, players want to play matches. Yeah. This bloody thing of training for four or five months, and, you know, starting back in October, November, December, January, training in the shit in the mud, and yeah. you know, uh, you know, my son is in playing with Reading, and and he's just um, six weeks of pre-season. Just it will be finished on Friday. They play Derby County in the first. So he's done six weeks of pre-season training, and in, and in the played, sunsh- in the sunshine as well. In the sunshine as well, and they have played six six challenge matches. You know yeah. now. He's only played one full 90 minutes. So we're obsessed. The GA is obsessed with training and, and four or five week breaks instead of, you know, playing the matches and, and, and that's it, you know. Mm. I saw you, I think you might have said it yesterday as well. So the gap in the early part of the season, you know, fixed that so the teams aren't doing three in a row. But also maybe think about giving a semi final replay for next year as well. Wouldn't be the worst thing. You know, you'd have replay in the Leinster final and you don't have a replay in the All Ireland yeah. um, semi final. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I would imagine that Leinster Council and Central Council are a different fixture, are different committees, but, you know, that, that I'd, I'd love to have had another shot next Sunday at Limerick I'm again. Sure. But, like, we, we don't, and they're the rules, and, and that's it, you know. Yeah, well, geez, we'd, we'd have all watched again, and, I mean, Claire Galway <laughs> next week's going to be pretty amazing. You'd so had, You'd have had two, and, like, like, you'd call away and Claire again next Sunday, another yeah. incredible match, and, you know, like, and Galway of. Uh, uh, Canning and McInerney went off injured and you know, that, that it does take its toll and you know so yeah so to sum up you're bitterly disappointed um, and yet also a party of geez it was brilliant and loved it and there's probably kind of a happiness to have been involved is that is that a fair point to where you are I, I'm extremely competitive you you probably summed me up I'm extremely competitive if I was playing Lude or Snakes and Adders I'd still want to win it but <laughs> you know it 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 has been an incredible summer. Like it's been incredible hurling, and, and to be part of that, I'm just sorry that we're not part of that now in three weeks' time on the 19th of August. Yeah. I'd love to be there. I'd love to be playing Galway or Clare, but you know Limerick, and and I take my hat off to them. They 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 were just that little bit better yesterday. Better experience. You know, crabbed or a little bit more than us, and 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 good luck to them in the yeah. final. So, if you could get, go back in time for one minute and go back to the sixty-second minute yesterday, and you get one minute on that sideline to get some message onto the team, or to make some substitution, or do something on sixty-two minutes yesterday, I, is there anything you could have done? Do you feel? No. Yeah. Um. I. You know. Just. 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 Just small bit of composure, and you know, which. We just gave away a couple of frees. They're 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 they're, they're just little little Tiny little, things, little yeah. small things that maybe he a party might have said like look let him go you know what I mean the, the pads over carrying our bills told I'm not hundred percent sure no but I look we let it go mm. like I'm, Jesus he doesn't let it go and then you're back to four then you're back to three and you're back to two one mm. they're gone ahead of you and you know and then and then Hoggy gets a great score you know and, you know I was just saying to to Froggy then if we got a minute in that um. In into the dressing room, you know, 
after the, 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 the 70 minutes was over and then you could go home and come back in a week's time, you, you might reorganise, you know yeah. what I mean? But look, that, that's the way it exists to this one. My very last question is just on that whole point of how enjoyable it is. Like, you know, you mentioned David and he was certainly over for one of the games I saw a while back. Yeah. Like, for your family, it must be an amazing thing. Like, like they must all be kind of on the journey with you. Have, have you found that this year? But the only time we come together as a family is, is when there's matches, whether there's Ireland soccer matches or um, Cork Ireland matches. Right. <laughs> and my, my sister... Um, my sister has started going to hurling matches now, um, even though she lives in, in, in Limerick. She's gone to all the Cork matches this summer. She absolutely enjoys them. You know, so, and for my family and, and my sister to be together yesterday in Crow Park, was, you know, it's, it's, it's very good for the family, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, they're winners as well and they want to win, you know what I mean? So, so we share the journey together. So. Yeah. Listen, John, thanks so much for your time. It's much appreciated. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thanks a million. Hey, hope you enjoyed that latest offering from Off The Ball. If you want to subscribe, and you should, check out just up here. All our latest stuff is just down here. Generally, knock yourself out.